monthly meeting for the quarter. The Scarborough Sanitary District. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Stein. Oh my God. Why was it written wrong? No. Oh. I don't have my present. My my mistake. All right. Tony. Here. Ben. Here. I'm Nick. Uh, I'm here. Huh? Uh, all right. We're gonna start over again. We're gonna call this monthly meeting to order. It's a regular monthly meeting for Scarborough Sanitary District. We're going to do the roll call. Starting on the left, Ben McDougall. Here. Tony. Present. Mike. Here. Mr. Stein, thank you. Ruth. Here. Jason. Here. All right. I'm here, too. Nick Rico, Chairman. Roll call is done. Approval of the minutes for the May meeting. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Move. Thank you, Jason. And I think I got Mike as a second. Second. Correct. Thank you. Any corrections, additions, subtractions? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed? By the way, Mr. Carroll has an excused absence this evening. Superintendent's report. A copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of May is included in the packet. Our average personal bill for the month is 1.44 million gallons today. Our from quality was well within our permitted limits um, with average 92% uh, BOD removal and 98% TSS removal with 21 and 4 milligrams feet, respectively. A copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of June is also included in your packet. Our average flow for that month was 1.37 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was also well within our permitted limits. We averaged 9% BOD removal and 98% TSS removal with concentrations of 28 and 6, respectively. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of May and June is included in your packet. No issues were noted. Attached is the summary report for our net energy billing credits for the solar farm that we joined during the first quarter of 2024. Uh, $14,723 has been realized in gross savings. In addition, this project is also generating renewable energy certificates. These were sold based on our uh, direction from which we received the payment of $9,031.08. Uh, we received our annual renewal from Clark Insurance a total cost uh, at a total cost of $83,486.10, an increase of 7%. Our 2024 budget for insurance is $80,000. Since the policy overlaps our fiscal year, we'll exceed our 2024 budget by $756.75. And I provided the breakdown. Scott, Karen, and I presented a training session on nitrification and denitrification at the Jet Sea Wastewater Operating School. This uh, session went very well and uh, was a lot of fun. A copy of the evaluation we fo uh, form that we received from the, the program is attached. Beyond the Dome was on site touring our facility to see how we could integrate the PFAS technology into our system. Uh, we have since also sent them some sludge samples. At this point, they're looking at potential pilot testing, probably not until 2026. Uh, John Tucker, our new laborer uh, um, slash operator, started Monday, July 15th. John comes from a family fully invested in wastewater. His dad is the superintendent of the York Sewer District, and his mom also works at the York facility as the compliance officer. Riley Cobb, who is present here tonight, uh, is our new chief plan operator. He started on uh, July 8th. Riley comes from the Saco facility and is highly uh, is highly th highly thought of as an up and coming professional in the field of wastewater. So, after the meeting, I'd like you to meet him. Uh, Ken Welch on September six will actually be retiring from the district. Ken has been an outstanding employee and has served the district for forty seven years. Actually, technically, it'll be forty six years and ten months, but. 
we'll round up. Uh, <laughs> While in Paris, I did take an opportunity to tour the Paris sewers in which one can walk through. Uh, the sewers are provided with street signs that reflect the streets above to help you identify your location. Uh, it used to be that they conducted these tours via boats, so they don't do that anymore. Um, let's see, and that's all I have with regards to the operations report. Any questions on the operations report? All right, moving on, we have correspondence. On June 5th, Galen Nickinson of Maine Department of Environmental Protection conducted our semi-annual inspection. As noted in the attached report, Galen wrote the facility is well-maintained and operated. No correct corrective actions were requested. Uh, as noted in the attached letter from Maine DEP, we are beginning the renewal process for our wastewater treatment uh, discharge license. So those are the two items in the correspondence. All right. Um, any questions about the correspondence? Nope. All right. Moving on to old business, SL Environmental Law Group. And I had a schedule here. I told Allison that I'd be quarter of before I Alyssa. Got to, Alyssa, I'm sorry. Sorry. Alyssa, that it would be quarter of by the time I got to this point. But she's early, so... SL Environmental Law Group, um, at the last trustees meeting, the board authorized me to move forward with executing the SL Environmental Law Group's agreement with regards to PFAS uh, litigation, pending a positive legal review. I reached out to Alyssa Tibbetts of Jensen Baird, attorneys at law due to a conflict that Bernstein Shore had, which resulted in them not being able to assist us. Ms. Tippetts had some initial comments, which I thought were pertinent to bring forward to the board for discussion before we moved forward. I provided those comments below, and Ms. Tippetts is here to answer any questions. I also provided you with a copy of the draft legal service agreement. Um, I can read those you don't have to, please comments don't. or just let Alyssa <laughs> take uh, this. How about we invite Alyssa to the mic? Introduce yourself, please. Um. Certainly. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, again, I'm Alyssa Tibbetts. I'm an attorney at a law firm, Jensen Baird, in Portland. Um, and I won't read these either. I'll spare you. But, you know, I, I will hit the highlights for you. Um, this is by no means intended to discourage you from considering this. I know there are many districts who have, in fact, signed on to this agreement. Um, but I want to be sure that you fully understand the type of agreement that this is. Uh, before deciding to enter into it or determine whether you'd like to go back to the firms to request any changes before entering into the agreement. So at a high level, this legal services agreement is, would be between the district and a group of law firms who are proposing to bring what we call multi-district litigation. So it's similar to a class action suit, but what it does is it allows them to find clients in this case, districts, water and wastewater districts, who have similar interests um, and may have experienced, and they will kind of sort of figure that out, we'll talk about that, but may have experienced or will expect to experience um, damages or costs in connection with PFAS in particular and your treatment of wastewater um, and uh, to the extent that you need to invest uh, and or um, remediate or you know any other costs that you may occur may incur and so what they're looking at is what the scope of that is to districts like yours um, and they're looking at how many districts may be facing the same challenges and whether they can target one or more of the sources of that PFAS contamination and recover from those sources some or as much as they can uh, of essentially um, penalties or violations to assist you with paying for and covering the expenses that you may, uh, may incur in treating the chemicals. Um, so it works in a way that there are multiple firms, as I said, who are partnering together to propose to bring this litigation forward. Um, it's a, a little bit unique in that what they're doing is talking to clients first and then determining what the cause of action and the claim is once they have the group together to figure out, you know, what are the common interests, what are the actual damages, what are we pursuing, 
So there's a fair amount of research that still needs to be done once they've decided who is going to, in fact, join in on this lawsuit. And it's multi-district litigation, which means that it can be brought in different jurisdictions throughout the country and then ultimately consolidated. So it helps the courts in that they don't need to have the same lawsuit in 50 different courts throughout the country to the extent that it's really the same subject matter. It helps the clients. It helps the firm. So it's intended to be more efficient to consolidate the cases, um, which is really why they approach it the way that they do now in terms of let's figure out what the scope of this is, who, who is sharing these concerns, and how we can group those together. Um, but for that reason, it's a bit of a unique legal services agreement. And so I just wanted to sort of highlight the proposal in terms of um, you're not entering into an agreement with just one firm. It's multiple firms because they work together um, in different jurisdictions and in different areas. Um, you are committing resources, whether that's time or your expertise, uh, not necessarily you know monetary upfront, but you do have to commit to assisting with whatever information gathering process they need in order to determine what your claims may be on your behalf. Um, and so it's you know hard for me to say exactly what that looks like, but I just like to flag that so that you're aware that you know this is this is you know maybe maybe it's Dave's time and Dave's staff's time that would be required to work with the attorneys on this to kind of figure out what is it that we. Um, that we're interested in as a district and that you know we need to provide you for information so that you can evaluate that for us on our behalf. Um, so that's important to know as you, as you look at this. Uh, the other real highlight of the, of the agreement is that it's a contingent fee agreement. And so the way that's defined here is currently it's proposed as 32.5% of whatever they recover on your behalf. Um, and the important thing to note about this is it's, it's what's defined as gross recovery. That includes both cash amounts and non-cash amounts. So if a recovery in a lawsuit assists you with making improvements to your system, they are eligible to receive 32.5% of the value of those improvements. So for instance, if you were to get a cash settlement, they may receive a higher percentage of that because they're also entitled to receive a percentage of the value of other non-monetary amounts that you get. So again, Fine, that's not a, you know, not a comment on whether that's fair or not, but just for you to keep in mind that gross recovery means both cash and the value of other improvements that may be part of any settlement. Um, and then, you know, the other highlight here is if there is no settlement, and of course that is their goal here, so I mean everybody's sort of working towards the same end, it's, um, that's in everyone's interest if you're moving forward with this kind of litigation, but to the extent that there were no settlement, the district's responsible for paying the fees, the attorney's fees. So worst case scenario, you proceed with litigation, it's not successful, and the district has committed to cover the costs of whatever that looked like along the way. Um, there are also um, certain sort of carrying costs. So the district would be required to pay pre-litigation fees. Um, they will cover most of the costs as you go along. They will try to recover those for you, but there are essentially interest fees for carrying that, for their firms to carry that. So on the end, they're gonna add to whatever carrying costs or expenses that they've incurred along the way in litigation um, to their contingency fee. Um, I, you know, I think some of the other terms I don't necessarily need to go into right now. They're, they're more kind of specific in terms of waiving conflicts and termination and withdrawal provisions and um, of course, your approval and any cross claims, and I don't think that those are major issues for you to necessarily discuss tonight, but you know, the highlights, I think, for you going into this is what's the nature of the litigation, what's the scope of it, what would the services look like, and what's the cost, both in your time and resources and ultimately in um, any recovery. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Those are sort of my high-level takeaways for you. Yeah. <coughs> Do we have any questions? I didn't. I, I, I had to tell you, you had your hand up first. Yeah. Um, and as far as timeline, we're probably talking years and years and years, correct? Most likely, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, SL Environmental, you said they're still um, signing folks up. Um, when when does that end? When will SNL uh, feel like they have enough? And have enough uh, data. You want to start your question again <laughs> after the mic is turned on? Thank you. Mike. I know. Uh, what was my question? Uh, so this this is going to be uh, years and years in, in in the making, correct? Most likely, yes. In terms of start to finish, litigation would take would take years, likely. Okay. So 
do we do we even have a a timeline or or when when is SL Environmental going to um, you know come to terms like they have enough data in order to uh, uh, form their complaint I guess yeah and I'm not sure I, I have the best answer for that um, I haven't been in close contact with them outside of the legal services agreement so I don't know currently what their timeline is in terms of actually filing a complaint they can determine at some point that they've got a, enough interest to proceed and others can still join so it's not like they have to have everybody but they've got you know it's it's easier for them certainly if they've got a, a large group that that's interested rather than amending their you know their parties as they go along um, my sense of that is yeah, I know I would guess that probably within the next six months they'd be ready to proceed with you know I think whatever interest they have at this point because um, they also don't want to have others who have signed on sit around too long right. on that um, but that's you know that's my guess and, and and that's certainly a question we could pose to them in particular but that's my sense of how long you know just based on the timeline to date in terms of their conversations around this okay well, one last question um, how many districts or municipalities have signed up so far in the state of Maine, is it around like eight or ten, or is it more? I don't think it's that many. Yet. You don't think of that many. I'll yeah, think. I'm not sure it's that many. I'll defer to the okay. chair because I think he knows better than I do. But yeah, five districts have okay. officially signed up so far. That's what I've heard. And they are of the larger utility, probably. Is they what include I... Port and Water District, yep. Sewer okay. District, which is the first, Sanford, City of Bangor, Lacqua, and Lewiston Auburn. Is that five? Alaska. You, did you say York or Agunquit? Wasn't York. one of them? You said York. York yeah. signed up first. So four or five have officially signed up. That's the last I heard. But they've been talking to a lot of other districts, including ours. Meaning Wells. Meaning Wells. Yeah. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Well, and Scarborough, too. <laughs> uh, I, just to give a, a more flavor of it, they've done this on the water side already. They've gone through this whole process, gathering water districts together and filing the lawsuit. Remind me where? Um, in that case, oh gosh. Well, I think they ended up filing it in DC. In DC, yeah. okay. Yeah. So the they filed case. it in DC and they're starting the settlement payments soon. Yes. The whole process took seven years. So they settled and never went to court. It did not go to court, um, but the companies that are defendants decided to settle, and I think districts have already started receiving money, maybe? I can't remember. As of our, you know, conversation several months ago, I think that was, like, you know, impending, but impending. so at this point, probably, but that was, yeah, it was very close in timeline. Okay. Hey. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to add on to what Mike said. Um, you know, yeah. on, on the water side, the criteria, I believe, is pretty regulated by the guidelines, right? Uh, I've done my fourth PFAS plant right now. So um, I believe in being proactive. I, and there's no question at all, right? The issue becomes this class action suit. And, and like Mike said, <laughs> the guidelines are pretty vague. And to go into a, a class action suit as a, as a partner, say, um, the timeline, uh, the guidelines, the development of uh, what the impact would be to the district and or other districts uh, could take a long time. And as you stated, there are going to be some fees as far as legal legalities to the, to the districts for the time you guys put into it. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of questioning the fact that I don't need, like I, I'm not really sure what a class action suit is, and once you agree to a, become partnership of a class action suit, what is the liability to the district? Yeah. And, and because this is a little bit different than a class action suit, where it's multi-district litigation, it's, it, it is in fact its own type of a lawsuit that allows cases to be consolidated. So you, you know you are not tied to the other parties. 
you are in a partnership with a law firm or a group of law firms who are representing the same interests of other parties, um, but you still remain an independent party and you have your own sort of say in terms of settlement um, and how far you proceed, et cetera. So you know, I think it's helpful in that regard because you have control over your participation in that way. Um, but you, know, you also do have some responsibility in terms of your participation. So you've, you've got to be able to provide whatever information they need in order to be successful in the lawsuit and commit the time and energy to do that. Um, for them to evaluate on your behalf what type of recovery they may be, you know, may be pursuing. Um, so that's, to my mind, um, the biggest investment for any one district that's participating in it. There is value in sort of the economy of scale that, and, and I think that's why they've modeled this off the water, you know, s side of how they have already pursued this litigation. They've seen that it's successful. Um, they know that going right to the source is the best possibility of recovery. Uh, so that, you know, that makes sense. I think, it, I think it all, you know, in theory works, but they are kind of testing this now anew based on something that worked well in a slightly different forum, as, as you said. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I don't think there's a significant amount of liability to the district, but, you know, I raise these points because I just want you to be aware that you are committing some resources to this. Um, and again, I think that they're, they're going to pursue this with very high expectations of settlement so that it is, there is not an out-of-pocket cost to any district. That, that would really be a huge failure, I think, on all, all accounts, and that's not how they're going into this. Um, but, you know, to be completely transparent and clear about what the, what the agreement says, the district is committing to pay for the litigation one way or another. The issue becomes the limits that, were, that Dave was a, uh, uh, <clears throat> an example of that we did testing at the plant. The limits were real low. I mean, I don't know how it compares to other facilities, but... Uh, compared wastewater to water, it's significantly different. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess the point I was trying to make is, without guidelines, limited um, testing, I mean, li limited output capacity for PFAS, that, that mm -hmm. findings, yeah. I'm kind of skeptical about the, the fact that you're chasing something that we really don't have any um, basis of of issues right now. Right, and it's, you know, it's, uh, well, I guess proactive is the word, but, you know, you're, it's certainly not recovering damages that you've already incurred. It's true. In That's this true. litigation, yeah. which is, which is unique. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the analysis that they're doing at this point is what are you likely to see mm -hmm. as a result of new regulations that may come down the road, some of which we don't even know at this point. So we're, you know, we're having to anticipate that. Um, and what can we reasonably anticipate that you're going to need to do in terms of your treatment facilities and plant and, and system to respond to those types of things? And I, I think there are certain things we can expect, but how we measure those and quantify those would have to, was part of the exercise that they're going to have to do prior to f shaping the lawsuit and what they're asking for for recovery. And the district is being proactive in, se in the sense of getting someone to do a pilot uh, for a removal, right? Is that true, Dave? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if we really know what we're going to end up doing. It's okay. you know, at this point in time, there isn't a definition. We don't have a direction. No, not much. <clears throat> My concern is all the various avenues. You know, I, you know they have it's a con, you know it's a contingency fee basis of thirty two and a half percent, which That's I know lot. some districts have negotiated down. But if you continue reading through your bullets, there's like five other or six other spots that they get additional monies and it, it to me it's kind of it's, you know it's, it's either contingency fee or not <laughs> right so right. yeah and you know we have these are just my comments back to you so we haven't gone back to them to see mm -hmm. how flexible they are in terms of negotiating this um, you know you certainly can have further conversation with them around these areas of concern and also ask them to you know help you understand better the timeline and the scope of what they're looking at right now now that they've got a few districts signed on um, that may be a worthwhile conversation for you to hear from them in terms of, you know, is there any negotiation over how we enter into this agreement? What have other districts done? And I know they have negotiated in some cases, um, but I, you know, I would absolutely recommend that if you decide to go forward and get some. I, I do feedback. have a question for you. Um, obviously, this is something I think the district needs uh, legal counsel on. Mm -hmm. And I heard through the grapevine, Nick Calico, that you weren't taking on any other clients. He's told me that too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> is this the extent of our consulting, oh. or uh, no. are you available for? With Nick's blessing, I am happy to continue uh, yes, helping. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bless you, my child. <laughs> Yes. Good. So. So, is there a date that you have to make a decision to sign off? Um. They haven't given me one. They they call me periodically and ask where we are with things, and I told them that we're uh, having council review it, and we're getting back in front of the board. And at that point, I'd love to know what the next step would be. So, I would assume at some point in time, they're you know in the next month or two, they're going to. Asked me to be the Fisher cut bait, so. And we can certainly invite them here. You know, if you think mm -hmm. that that's helpful to have a discussion. That might be the next step. Was invite. Yeah, you know, see what they, what they see, see to what extent they're you know willing to modify their agreement, and then have them come and make their presentation to the board and go from there. I think that, that makes sense. So do you know what modifications you're going to ask them for, or is that not going to be found out? I think this list that Alyssa provided yeah. are the ones we're going to ask yeah. for. Because I do know that, I think it was Portland Water District that negotiated down the 32.5%. I think they're at 25%. Yeah, it was somewhere in the high 20s, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know if they massaged some of the other requirements, but I suspect they did. So is that, do I have a direction then to work with? I, I think so. Um, I think so. A new council. Sure. And uh, um, ask her to start reviewing it with them and seeing what they can adjust and then invite them to our next trustees meeting to make sure. a presentation. Perfect. Um, do that need a motion? I was wondering about that. That would be nice, I think. Yeah, yes. I, I, I'd be open to that motion. I mean, I definitely. What he said. <laughs> yeah, what you said. <laughs> what he <Okay>. said. <laughs> so does that mean you move, Tony? I do. I mean, being proactive, I think, is, is a huge part of success, right? And uh, Dave's good about that. And um, But there are some questions that I think need to be answered. I'll second that. Thank you, Matt. All right. Um, now yeah. is about the time when we discuss it. Any more <laughs> discussion? Yeah. Yes, Mike. Um, my mic's on. <laughs> uh, one, one question. So who's going to take the uh, lead on this? Uh, it, it, is it your firm or? It, okay. Yep. Okay. Bernstein yeah. Shore, Bernstein Shore cannot represent right. us in this. Right. Actually, so, so you, Alyssa, or your firm, you're, you're, uh, are the one who's going to develop the uh, letter to uh, send back to SL Environmental? Yes, I okay. can follow up with Attorney Sansone directly, and I, and I can certainly keep Dave in the loop um, with some of these comments, mm -hmm. and so that you know we can have some correspondence with him about this feedback, and then coordinate having him do a presentation to answer some further questions. Jensen Baird would act as our advocate, yeah, and communicating, but SL Environmental is coordinating the lawsuit. Any good. other questions, comments? All in favor for the motion? None opposed? Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. We'll be talking. And although you're welcome to say you do not have to. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> Hello, Newman. Have fun. <laughs> New business? New business. Phase right. 11. Or is that phase 2? No, it must be phase 11. 11. Town center. <laughs> Drew, you are up. I'd Although be, I'll let Dave introduce you. Sorry. On behalf of Crosshold Holding, Drew Gagman is here uh, from Goral Palmer. Uh, they requested that the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approve the proposed phase 11 gravity sewer, which will service the town center area of the Downs. Um, uh, which, uh, this is a phase two of that, that uh, project. Um, the area was originally designed for sewer, sewer conveyance via deep gravity sewer. 
and to pump station 27 during the construction of the fa first phase of uh, this project. Uh, the, the presence of soft liquefied clays was encountered, making construction difficult and leading to potential for long-term settlement in sewer of the sewer mains. Therefore, the initial main was vertically raised to ensure constructability and limit post-construction settlement of the main. The gravity sewer will flow to the recently approved pump station number 28, which was uh, which uh, is being designed specifically to service this area. Uh, the gravity sewer is proposed will be transferred over to this uh, district upon completion of the project. It consists of 58 feet of 12-inch gravity sewer, um, 1,380 feet of 8 inch gravity sewer and 8 manholes. All right. Um, I'll entertain a oh, motion should, first, please. Do you want me to? Yeah, could oh, you yeah, read the conditions? Do that. That's, that's do that. I, I left that off. Uh, I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, the wastewater allocations for lots 8 and 9 are at 160 gallons per day each for a total of 320 gallons per day of typical sanitary. At least. Uh, the current capacity reserve fee is $19.71 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR construction cost index. The capacity reserve fee is due on the 360 gallon per day allocation for lots eight and nine. Based on the current rate, the total capacity reserve fee due for this project is $7,095.60. Any flows? Uh, more than this approval are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Uh, provide updated plans to the superintendent that satis satisfactorily address uh, the peer review comments. Uh, costs associated to, uh, with the engineering peer review will be paid for by the development. Final plans will be submitted to the superintendent for uh, approval prior to construction and a sewer extension permit is required. Now I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve with the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Thank you, Jason. I have a question. Uh, can I have a have second a first? No, we, we, second. Thank you, Mike. I have a question now. So originally it was a gravity uh, to the existing 27, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, from the district's perspective, you've got another station to run, right? So uh, what is the impact to the district in terms of cost? Because of the fact that now you got another station to maintain, we have As 127th more maintenance. <laughs> well, that's well, well, well. I guess the, the impact I have is I understand the conditions that caused it, right? No problem. I mean, it happens all the time. But what the agreement up front was that they would do it a certain way. Now the district has an impact to this uh, this project because of additional maintenance and operations and so forth and so. Forth. I would I would um, clap back a little bit. Okay. The, the the issues and maintenance of a deep sewer can be significant. I don't if there's a problem with, with yeah. a deep sewer, you're looking at yeah. huge huge maintenance fees. I understand. Okay. So um, with regards to having another pump station. Overall, I don't think it's relatively low horsepower. Okay. It's going to be a block and book building, which is a long term um, structure, much uh, and well built. Um, I'm personally, I'm much more comfortable with that. And the 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 cost impact to the district than having a deep sewer in a mud pie. Okay. Thanks, Dave. All right, Drew, do you mind introducing yourself and talking about the pump? Sure, Drew Gagnon with Coral Palmer, uh, representing Crossroad Holdings LLC. Good to see the board again. Um, so at the May 25th, I think it was, meeting, uh, the district approved pump station 28, um, which is what this entire collection system is tributary to, and then it's getting pumped back to, 20, uh, to 27, which is the recently constructed and operated one. So. I've got an overall plan here that I just thought was good for just to refresh the board on location of where we're talking about since the Downs is a large project and we're on phase 11 now, which is a subdivision phase, not a site plan phase. But nonetheless, 
Um, Highgast Parkway is at the bottom of your page here. Payne Road is on the left-hand side and Route 1 on the right-hand side. Project is pretty much in the center, hence the town center name for it, and it's the second phase of the town center, um, which is under construction right now. So if you go out there today, that's actually some binder paved along the roads all along here, and you can pretty much get from Highgast Parkway down the Route 1 at this point. So this phase that we're uh, that you're reviewing tonight is really just the northern second phase of that town center. It actually mirrors it pretty well in terms of intersections and roadway improvements and such. And again, this is just a slightly more blown up planned here. Um, and I appreciate D Dave's narrative. We're essentially extending or creating eight inch gravity sewer main and then a small 12 inch segment down by the pump station down here. Um, and we're extending these sewer mains up through Downs Road, up in this direction. So the sewer is gonna be flowing to the left as you're looking at it. And up a unnamed public street right here that will eventually be named once they decide on it. And that'll flow down and then over to the pump station. Um, so again, kind of in typical Downs fashion, we're setting this project up for future extensions and future connections. So this is the first phase of, <laughs> take it away from the phase terminology, but it's the first portion of this area that'll eventually get extended as the development gets built out. Um, so as Dave mentioned, this is all public infrastructure. Gravity down to the pump station, which was recently approved, and then the force main back to the first phase, which we left the stub for at the Market Street and Downs Road intersection, which is over at the right-hand side of the sheet. Um, and then the next item on your agenda, will review lot eight, which is this big lot in the middle. Um, other than that, I'm happy to answer any questions that the, the board may have. Thank you. Cool. Any questions? Yeah, real quick. Go ahead, um, Mike. Uh, the capacity of the station okay. is the, is based on this project, correct? Correct. No, there's any capacity for any future tie-in? I'll say future for the downs tie-in. There won't be outside of the downs like 500 acre limit. There's not any additional capacity it's planned for. Um, and really, what we did with this is. It's still all going to pump station 27. Right. So we really just broke out what I'm calling the yeah. direct sewer shed that was going to pump station 27 before. We kind of broke it out to this one that's going to get sent to it. So it's essentially the same yeah. flows. We've just broken it out differently. It's okay. curious about that. Any more questions for Drew? Okay. All in favor of the project? Not opposed. Thank you, Drew. Thanks. Next project, medical office building, lot eight of the town center district in the Downs. On behalf of Remedy Investments, LLC, Gold Palmer, uh, requested the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approve approval of the proposed 62,600 foot medical office building. The proposed two story mixed use building is anticipated to include uh, 18,000 300 square feet of ambulatory surgery, surgery center, uh, 5,600 feet of urgent care, 13,000 square feet for image center, and 25,700 feet for medical offices and maintenance. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Waste, the wastewater flow allocation is uh, 2,970 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Uh, this project is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $19.71 per gallon and adjusted monthly based on the ENR. The current allocation for this lot is 160 gallons per day as just discussed. Therefore, the capacity reserve fee will be due will be based on $2,810, uh, 10 gallons per day. Uh, based on the current rate and the total capacity reserve fee due for this project is $55,373.95. Any flows more than this approval are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees and sewer, uh, $100 connection sewer permit would be required. Move approval with the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Thank you, Jason. Do we have a second? Second, second. Mike. All right, you're up again, Drew. Drew Gagnon, this time with Remedy Investments, LLC. Um, Remedy, uh, so the company is 
remedy medical properties. They're the, uh, the large, I believe they're the largest medical office building tenant and developer in the United States. They own, I think, about 800 buildings. Um, so they develop, buy, and fit out um, medical office buildings for tenants. In this case, it's going to be Intermed, which will be moving their ambulatory surgery center here and expanding their urgent care and imaging as well as their medical office within this facility. So we're excited to partner with them um, in bringing this, this building to the downs. Um, relatively simple plan. We just have a six-inch sewer connection coming out from the building connecting to a stub from the uh, subdivision approval that we just had. Um, so this project is currently in the permitting phase with the town. We're expecting a final approval here hopefully in the next month or so. Um, and yeah, happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Any questions for Drew? By none. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Budget summary. Uh, the six-month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Move approval. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Any questions? Uh, I had a couple. Um, I'm looking at this. We're 50% done. I think the biggest one was power. I know we're saving a lot of money with the net energy billing credits and the RECs. We're about 55, 56% spent. That's you, the timing issue. It's a timing on, a on it. bills. Yeah, we're get, and also we're getting, we're, we're really just now into the heavy solar production time okay. frame. All right. So let's, more, more credits coming more this credits summer. More credits are coming this summer. Uh, that's what I anticipate. And remind me again, the contingency fund. We're about 80% spent. And um, I know there were pop-ups throughout the first part of the year. It's so mostly the storm relations. Storm relations. Storm related items. Storm related for items. Higgins, Park, Higgins, Park, uh, Higgins Beach Higgins. pump station. Okay. Those are the questions I had. Any other questions for the superintendent? Barring none, all in favor of the budget? None opposed. Thank you. Public comments. Do we have any public comments? <laughs> No. Okay. Uh, that's simple. So, uh, trustee comments. We'll start with Ben. All right. I'd like to welcome Riley and uh, and John. Look forward to meeting him as well. And just thank the rest of the staff for more great work this summer. And hope, uh, hope everybody's having a nice summer. Awesome. Cool. I didn't have my mic on for that, but yours was on. So. Okay. You yeah, you got mine too. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, welcome. Um, it's great. This is a great place. And you're, I'm glad Dave and, and everyone else uh, went through the process of finding on um, unfortunately what happened. And uh, uh, hopefully things will go forward here. Um, Dave, I want to say thank you for that, the PFAS thing. I thought it was really good. You know, it's, it's, it's a little scary sometimes going forward, but if you don't take the steps in the right direction, I think uh, the district's going to wind up on the back end of things. So, um, yeah, I commend you for jumping on this and trying to figure it out. <laughs> You're talking about the PFAS? PFAS yeah. 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 Cool. Mike? Again, welcome, Riley. Um, and also to uh, John, uh, John Tucker. So and we now have two Cobbs and two Tuckers working at the plant, <laughs> and they're not related to one another. <laughs> That's Serena. Cool. And uh, to echo what Ben said, hope everyone is having a great summer. Summer's flying by. It's what, the 25th of uh, Damn, sorry. July already. But um, training camp for the NFL started yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we're that much closer to uh, NFL football. <laughs> oh boy. Jason. Uh, Welcome, Riley. We had the chance to meet down in the district a week or so ago. Uh, joining a great team. Welcome to John, of course. And uh, I look forward to meeting him. I haven't had the opportunity to meet him yet. But uh, no, thanks to the staff for everything they do. Again, I'm down there on most Fridays. 
and uh, everybody seems to be in good spirits with the new hires, so it's great to see, and welcome to the team. Cool. Ruth? Welcome to you and your wife. We're very excited to have you as part of the district. Thank you very much, and thank you for everything that you're doing down there, Dave, to keep things running. So we appreciate it. Cool. I will echo my fellow trustee comments in welcoming Riley Cobb to the district. I truly appreciate it. Um, I think it's a good fit for both you and the district. Excellent. I also want to welcome John Tucker, um, and I also want to extend kudos to Ken for 46 years and 10 months. It's amazing. That is totally amazing. It truly is. Anyway, um, I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jason. I All right, it. Tony, get a second in. All in favor? Unopposed. We're done. Thank you.